for my entire life, I sort of had this faint dream of being an artist. But it was it was so far away, like being a rock star, sort of. Um, so I always was very passionate about art. So I sketched a lot, and I drew a lot, and so on. But um, I never really expected to be a career. And um, I think to the point where I'm now, there was a lot of coincidences that actually led to this. Um, for example, I. I was very much into street art as a fan, basically. I, I felt, though, there's not enough street art that works with city lights. I feel like a lot of street artists work sneakily at night, but they, they don't display their art at night. So I tried to come up with a concept that works with city lamps, um, bus shelters, and so on. And um, it, was, it was rather like a fun experiment, though. And I was really caught by surprise um, by the success it actually had mostly due to social media and the YouTube video I had uploaded, which went viral, actually. And, um, so it was actually others who sort of, you know, told me that I had the ability to, like, make this faint dream, like, come true. And I guess I just went, went on with it, step by step, very intimidated first, and then, you know, more and more convinced that this could work out. So I didn't plan to work with tape at all. So my, my initial idea was to create street art for like a nightly face of the city. And as I mentioned before, like using street lamps, bus shelters as my urban display, basically. And um, I started with little sketches on plexiglass. So just with a marker, I, I sketched something out on a piece of plexiglass and I put it up on different places. And one night I put up one of these sketches with a piece of uh, brown packing tape. And it was the first time I saw how the packing tape reacted together with the light and created that beautiful sepia tone. And I found that, that there's a potential in that. I mean, sometimes I feel it's almost scary how close you have like greatness and success and drama and failure. And um, so, so you got the, the, the roaring 20s, but you got the big depression. And it's, it's so interlinked and close together like hybrids and fall. And um, I'm really interested in characters that have the potential for both, basically, who, who can go both ways. And it's maybe sometimes just a step away from each other to be celebrated or to be like, you know, frowned upon, to be like making a great decision and changing something for the positive or abusing the power and just going like in dark places. And um, I feel that the writers of this sort of lost generation, I think is like a, a term for that, like Hemingway, Salinger, Fitzgerald, they, they very much dealt with these sort of characters. And I've, I'm, I'm very interested in that too, the ambivalence, ambivalence actually about a person, because we all have that in us. And um, it's, it's not easy to bring it all into an artwork, because you have this only that one moment, right? You, you have to tell a story with only one picture, like a movie has one and a half hours, a book has like 400 pages, and I only have a, you know, one, one frame. Um, and especially if you're interested in, in you know, ambivalent characters, it's, it's tricky to get this all in there. But at least I try, and uh, in that sense I try to connect to that quote, I guess, and show both sides, the fragility, but also the, you know, the greatness, the, the, the classiness, the, the beauty. Um, the glamour, maybe.